defense. Um, you know he's going to rise to the occasion. He loves the he loves when the lights are on him. You know, and he's just a really really tough competitor. Um, he he's he's tough as heck uh, mentally, and he you know he's going to fight you. Uh, he does a lot of things very well. He, he's a very talented guy. I, I love being around him. Um, he's just one of those guys that uh, I'm very fond of um, because of what he's all about. So what he's done as far as uh, leadership-wise, you know, he's he's a guy that sets the tone in that room. And um, But all of those guys, I think they're very competitive. So it's kind of like, okay, he rises his play, so the next guy rises his play. And that's kind of, you know, how it goes. And that's what your room should be. And yet, it's the same as the quarterback's room. I say it all the time. And like that competing, everybody wants to be the quarterback. Everybody wants to be the premier tight end. But at the same time, they're good teammates. They compete against each other, but they're good teammates, you know. And that's is what you want to have. And, I, you know, you got to give Coach Howell all the credit in the world for developing that room and, and to keeping that uh, brotherhood together and keeping it tight. Mike, what would you say is the leading factor in your players choosing to play in the bowl game despite playing at the Well, I think it's all individual, you know what I mean? So w- whether one guy wants to and, you know, the other guy doesn't, it's it's – Whatever their individual preference is, whatever their thoughts are, um, you know, their family discussions and that sort of thing. It's so individualized, I couldn't speculate really too further on that. Was there a strategical like, difference between last year? Because I remember there were a number of guys who, you know, cleared for the draft after the bowl game was played. Yeah. Um, and this year, you had a number of guys who announced that decision before the game. Um, was there a difference in the decision to kind of put that out, or was that also individual? There's so much to think about as far as uh, everything's concerned. My job <laughs> is to get a good game plan and, and call a good game against Utah and, and win the Rose Bowl. That's where my focus is at. All the other stuff to me is just all smoke and mirrors. they got a cornerback who's out. He's an NFL guy, Clark Phillips. Could you do anything to maybe target their, his replacement? Well, sure. I mean, you've got to make sure that uh, if, if there is – Anywhere on the field that you feel you have an advantage, you, you better make sure that you target that. So, you know, a lot of our offense is based on pure progressions. And so if one guy's double covered, we go to the guy that's one-on-one. I mean, basically, that's that's as good as you can get one-on-one, right, unless they bust. But there's going to be certain plays where you're trying to get certain guys scot-free. But against this type of defense, and as much man as they play, you're going to get one-on-one coverage. And our guys are going to have to rise to the challenge and win those one-on-one matchups. Um, and I know that they feel good about their plan and who they have behind him, and and they're going to be competitive. And it's like, it's like anything. It's like this is an opportunity for the next guy to step up and to prove what he can do. It's going to be a great competition, and it's going to be fun to see. Mike, last year at this time, uh, you were getting a lot of questions about the, the short yardage uh, situations and how you guys struggled last season. Yeah. This season, obviously, it was a much different uh, scenario. What, what do you attribute that improvement to? I think just a little bit of um, a really good package uh, that, that we've come up with. But it's not just plays. I, I think the plays are kind of secondary, really. It's about the players' attitudes and their belief in one another. Their ability to come off off the ball and and uh, you know I think our backs have done a tremendous job. I think Sean's done a great job making sure that we're in the right plays. Our staff has done a tremendous job game planning and helping me out and making sure that uh, we're taking advantage of whatever front that we see. So it's a collective deal and, and there's a lot of uh, shared ownership on it from players um, and the rest of our staff who have been tremendous throughout. Um, you know, the whole season. And, you know, just going back from, um, you know, it really starts in the spring, and, and you want to make sure that what you're repping in the spring and what you're repping in fall camp and um, those situations. Because when you get the tough part about short yardage is there's only so much banging you can do. And to put your hand in the dirt and get, you know, 22 personnel or 13 personnel or whatever you're in and to muscle up and to go full speed and get a really quality rep that's very, very hard to come by and they're very valuable. And so you got to be careful at the same time because you want to be healthy. And those are, that's always the, the fine line of, 
of, of uh, how much of short yards you can rep during the week. So those, those are important things, but I think those are the most important parts of why we improve. Have you guys repped during the season this year? Sure. No, it's same. same. Yep, yeah. same. Both Nick and Katron have, had, have seen a lot of uh, work this season, have had successful seasons, but ultimately, you know, one can only be out there for that first series. How do you? That's guys not necessarily true. We can go. We can go two tailbacks in at one time. That's not against the rules. Typically, typically this season it's been one. You're right. How? How? how I'm just you trying to throw Utah that? off a little bit. <laughs> How, how, how do you guys make that decision? As, as, you know, is it I, I lean on Coach Sider. He does a great job with it. He knows the room. He's got the tightest relationships with those guys. And so he manages that room, and I'm hands off with personnel as far as that. He's done a hell of a job with it. Looking at it a little different way, do really good running backs make an offensive line look better, or does a better offensive line make the running backs? It goes, both, it goes hand in hand. It's team. And... It's the, it's the same thing with run and pass, you know. The better your pass game, the better your run game. The better your run game, the better your pass game. You know, we're, we're all, you know, this is the one sport that is, it, it's so, it, maybe not the one sport, I don't want to sound arrogant as a, as a football guy, but it is a sport that, to me, is, um, it represents a lot of different things, and from a, from a family standpoint, from a from a group work standpoint, from an organizational standpoint, you know we're in this thing together, and we need all eleven guys doing their job together, so we can all eat. And if one guy doesn't do his job, we don't eat. So I think that's is a really important thing that you brought up, that I think is uh, the crux of of football and team and organization and family, and and I think that's. Uh, that's dead on what you said, man. That's a good point. At what point, Mike, did you realize, because Theo was telling us in the spring that it was like, all right, Nick had a big run, and that the buy-in was there, that Theo at that moment was like, all right, we can run the ball, we can run short yard as well. Was there a moment for you that you're like, all right, we have the guys do it and we're going to do it well this season? I don't, I don't get to that. You know, it's always about like, okay, we, we got to get better. Yeah. we got to win the Rose Bowl. I mean, we, we got to beat Utah. So, like, Okay, we're gonna be. I, I don't do that type of thinking. Yeah. You know, it's like, okay, how can we get better? How can we get better? How can we get better? What can I do? Practice-wise, you know, formationally, are we are we getting enough reps with this? We're, you know, we do a good job with our you know A-list runs, like making sure that we're getting a lot of reps there, and then B-list runs, and then C-list runs, making sure that you know those are the things that occupy our thoughts. Is the process, and I know it's coach speak, and I know you guys are like, you know, just another coach saying process, <laughs> but it's really, it's about that, because good things will be a result, because otherwise, if you start thinking about, oh, okay, we're, we're now a good run team, well, somebody's going to catch up to you, and, and, and it's a humbling game. Football is a very humbling game, and you don't want to get down that road of, of thinking anything other than, like, how can we improve? So, I, I know it's... I think it starts in practice, you know. I, it's it's not just about games. I think you see things in practice. If you're practicing hard, which we do, and you're going against a really good defense in practice, which we do, you know, you start to see things. And even in spring ball at fall camp, and it starts to add up, you know. But you don't want to sit there and say, I, I, you know, we've arrived. we got to continue to scratch, claw, and do whatever we got to do to get better. Yesterday, James said, you know, not every player is going to play all evil plays uh, in the Rose Bowl. Um, you know, how, how, how much do you guys as a staff think about players' future in, in the NFL, declaring for the draft and such, as you uh, plan for players' workload uh, in the first season? I think we do a great job of communicating you know, with the position coach and, and the players in their room those conversations and making sure that we're all on the same page and I think coach Franklin does an unbelievable job as a head coach of listening to his players and it trickles down to the assistant coaches and I think that's the key with that topic so you know those are those are you know um, the the relationship part of it which is really important to have because there's there's a lot at stake for everybody and we all know that at the same time you know this is a wonderful opportunity like how did the recruitment of Jackson play out for you guys? Obviously, somebody else decommitted, but then how, how did that pick up so quickly? And can you just talk about him as a player? Yeah, he's um, 
he's a really exciting guy to get to know. You know, the the one when you when you get to know him um, as a person, you get to know his family, hear his history, talk to the high school coach, just everything like just adds up to quarterback trainer and you know his work he did at Elite Eleven and all of those things. They just start to add up and you get to know a little bit more of the intangible side of it. You know, he's got a really good story and he's worked through a lot of adversity. He's a really tough kid. He's a competitive kid. So he's a really tough football player. And then he's a really good quarterback on top of it. He's a great student. So, like, he's a great fit for Penn State. And then, you know, just, uh, you know, you put the game film on, which is very, very important. you got to have that as well. And it all it all adds up. So I don't remember the second part of your question. Well, it was just how did that how did that come together so quickly for you guys after you had a decommitment and then you were able to come through with another good quarterback? Well, I think you're always planning and you're always trying to be ready for any any speed bump that you might you know encounter. You know, it is recruiting; crazy things happen, so you got to have plans ready to go. So I think you have to credit our recruiting staff. Um, we've got a we've got a really good. Um, well, well organized staff that you know Andy Frank does a heck of a job for us, but there's a lot of people involved, so you have a lot of a lot of assistance at the same time. You kind of look at needs and moving forward in that. I know James has said that he wants to add a receiver, and Taylor said two receivers. Um, how do you kind of weigh in? At the, like, at what point in the process it's like, hey, there's a guy in the portal who'd like him. Here's his film. At what point do you kind of enter that conversation? I kind of went down the road with Jackson. Maybe I shouldn't have with the question. And then now you're going down the road with Portal. I'm here for press conference on Rose Bowl and beating Utah. So oh, I want to keep it. I want to keep it about that. When you look at Utah's defense, their coach is on the defensive side of the ball right now. You got here. I can't hear you, yeah, sir. Your coach, the Utah defensive coaches were here a few minutes before you got in here. Oh, they were? Yeah. Did they leave anything behind? They did not. Um, they actually left you. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Check that on the board. Yeah. Um, but they feel like uh, there's some similarities in your offense to what they practice against, and they feel like that helps them. So when you look against your defense, does that help you prepare for? Yeah, I think I think yeah, absolutely. I mean, based out of four down, you know, like to challenge you physical up front, um, defensive ends that are physical that can rush, can't play well against the run, and the biggest thing is pursuit, right? I mean, the tenacity. And just how they run to the football, how they tackle, uh, their aggressiveness in coverage. So that yes, there is you know, same as them. You know, feel the same way. And when you look at their defensive line, and they, they create pressure in all sorts. They, they create pressure in a lot of different ways. So how will you prepare for that? How will you prepare for that so far? And then what do you think your strengths are in that regard to help try and defend them? Well, when you're game planning, it all starts with how you're going to find ways to run the football. What are your best runs? And then you know, how are you going to pick up? There, are, you know, any problem blitzes. Um, so those are the first things that you you go through. And so, how do you do it? You start with the analytics and the numbers and the breakdowns, and you know what's their highest percentage blitz and to what formations. And then, so if you can try to manipulate a formation to avoid a certain blitz to to a certain protection, you try to do those things and match that all up. There's a lot of work that goes into it. Um, but at the end of the day. Um, you got to work, you know, you got to, it starts in the classroom. We got to present it the right way. Uh, Phil does an unbelievable job with our blitz pickup, and so does J1 Sider. So you got the running backs coach and the O line coach, uh, you know, making sure that we've got a solid plan. So it starts there in the instruction in the classroom, and then you take it out to the field, and we'll have walkthroughs. So they slowly, so it's like instructional, and then it's, you know, more visual and spatial in the walkthrough, and then you got to get the full speed reps. And so, you know, our defense doesn't run exactly the same blitzes as their defense. So there, there's a mix and match with that. And then your scout team has to be on point. And, you know, you talk about development and having depth. And that's a big part of it because those scout team guys, our, our, our developmental squad does an unbelievable job each week of, of, of giving us really good looks and playing with speed. You know, they're not... You know, the mentality is there is that we're going to challenge the offense. They have a big part of, uh, of what we do. They're a reason for our success, and they understand that. And I think that's part of Coach Franklin and his culture and, and how we, uh, 
you know, practice, you know, how you practice. If you, if you came and saw us practice, you would have maybe have a hard time telling, like, you know, ones and twos apart from the developmental squad, is, developmental squad from an effort standpoint. Is that an invitation? Practice? That, oh, that has to come <laughs> from the head man. You're always welcome yeah. as far as I'm concerned, Audrey. <laughs> Mike, you go, in 2020, obviously, you were in Austin that season. But a lot of that physical stuff wasn't there. It was Zoom meetings. And oh, yeah. What do you learn about And you're wearing a mask now, too, so it's like flashing back. I haven't had, I haven't had the flu in two and a half years. Well, so good for you. Good uh, for me. <laughs> not against but it. What do you learn about having how you teach guys during that, that COVID year? Just That's interesting. That's an interesting conversation right there. I, you know, I think it's, it's the hard part when you're doing – virtual um is evaluating how efficient the teaching is and how they're grabbing the material now there's ways to try to grab it you know and and ask and make sure that they can spit it back and then but to get on the field and see how it translates was the difficult part but from a feedback standpoint a back and forth standpoint you can get that information like okay he's getting it right uh just like in anything with learning but when it goes to the on the field, you know, you, you just can't like in a normal spring ball, you're 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 teaching and then you're on the field. Then you could see, okay, it translated to the physical movement, you know. Um, that was difficult. And then, you know, as as a teacher, you're always trying to figure out like how do they learn, you know, so I can like adapt my style and you know, I can I can um, try to teach to the student as best they learn maybe he's a spatial guy maybe he likes video more maybe he's got to actually walk through it so you're always trying to evaluate how they best learn do i have to say it a different way to this guy you know so that's that was a hard part it really you couldn't touch it and feel it you know what i mean for some guys like theo uh, it, it might have hindered their physical development a little bit have, have you seen a, a big jump from him and some of the other young guys specifically now that things have gotten I think our, our strength staff does an unbelievable job, and it's it's amazing to see um, certain guys develop. Um, the the fun ones are always the the long skinny guys because there's just so much ceiling, um, and uh, I, I think our staff does a tremendous job um, of developing that. But I think along with that strength development, you got to have a great nutrition program because it goes hand in hand. And I think we have uh, Leanne, Loudon, uh, Leanne Loudon does an unbelievable job with our nutrition department. And our guys are, are well fed and our athletic program supports us very well. And our athletic department, I should say. So, I mean, it's, it's a great situation uh, to be in as an assistant coach. You just see, watch that. All these people are, are, are helping those guys out. And, uh, you know, you, you recruit the talent and you can see, you know, where they're going to be in two, three years. And you put those pieces in place and watch it grow. We haven't had a chance to ask this since he announced he's leaving, but CB going to Pitt, what was that like for you? Because obviously, you know, quarterback's such a different position, but he's, you spent a lot of time with him. And, um, what was the process like for you, and what do you think he, he can do kind of with his future? You know, as a position coach, and I want to really talk about Utah, but uh, you want the best for your players, you know, and I get it. I mean, it's it's part of the part of the deal. And he was always uh, he did it the right way. He communicated very well with Coach Franklin and myself. So support him as much as we possibly can. Want the best for him moving forward. Mike, talking about like the player developing, how would you say Mitch Tins has developed this season, and how much it's meant for him to transfer this season to give you some wide receiver help? Tinsley's been awesome. You know, he comes from an offense in Western Kentucky where they threw it about sixty times a game. So coming to Penn State. You know, and want to go against the best of the best, right? You're transferring from Western Kentucky to Penn State. Um, and then the transition from their wide open air raid, throw it 60 times a game to our offense is significantly different because we have tight ends we have to feed the rock to. We've got really good tailbacks that we have to feed the rock to. And then we're going to throw it to the receivers at the same time. So we're a very multiple offense that likes to distribute the rock. And not one time uh, was there any indication of, of him being salty or not getting the ball enough. You know, it was it's just a team guy, uh, loves to compete, and has caught on to our offense very well. Um, he's a smart guy, uh, very dependable, can do a lot of different things for you. He's been, he's been top-notch. Love that kid. For some teams, 
bowl games are kind of a look more toward the future than a cap to the season that you finished. Last year you guys had a lot of opt-outs. It's not really the case this year. So how are you balancing your offense, especially your quarterback room, with trying to use this extra time for the young guys versus capping off what was a successful 2022 season? I said it early. Uh, it's okay. Um, you know, you phase it. So early on in bowl prep, you're trying to develop as best you can to young guys because you're not you have time and then as you as you melt into the game week you're you know tapering those reps a little bit more to the guys that are going to play so it's a lot about development early and then as it gets closer to game time you got to get ready for the game and win the game during that early developmental period how have you seen Drew kind of thrown the ball? um it's just a little bit quicker with both of them you know it's just uh little things that uh used to take three seconds at the line of scrimmage now are there you know so it's just the whole process mentally uh, from run checks to rpos to protections progressions all of that stuff it's not just one thing i think it's just been an overall developmental you know improvement mike utah is probably one of the more physical teams that you'll see yeah. how far has this team come since michigan do you think in being able to meet a challenge yeah of a team like utah yeah i, I think it's interesting when you when you look at our ball club. I think we've gotten better throughout the course of the season, you know, and that's what you hope for. You want to see that, you want to see it go like this. And and any time you're going like this, there's going to be the plateaus, right? But a steady improvement. Uh, I think our guys are driven. I think it speaks to our culture and, and what's Coach Franklin is, you know, the process and, and and being able to practice every day with purpose and intent, and be very intentional about what you're doing, whether it's in the weight room, in the classroom, you know. I think all those things add up. And, you know, being disciplined and being tough just doesn't happen. It takes daily habits, um, and, and it just adds up. And then I think what you see is, is, is the product of that. Mike, with Juice moving on, how key was it for Hunter to accrue some opportunities at center this year on the practice field? Oh, big. Who else, who else is going to be you know, involved in that, in that kind of conversation moving forward at center? Yeah. Um, really, really important um, for, for Hunter to um, – to get those reps, um, we, we think the world of him. He's very tough. He's very physical. Um, but center is a difficult position by nature. I mean, you think about it. I mean, how hard is it to block a 300-pound zero nose guard all day and you're playing an odd team, right? Or how hard is it to, to reach a, a two technique, the guy that's lined up on the guard? Now, on top of that, besides uh, besides doing all that, we got you got to snap a ball between your legs. <laughs> and then, oh, don't forget, it's on two, right? <laughs> so those are all the things that, uh, that, that you think about. And, uh, you know, uh, really, really happy for Hunter and see his progress. Anything we didn't hit on on the Nets? No, I'm good. Is Nick, is I'm Nick good. Dawkins still somebody that we should? Oh, yeah, Nick's, Nick's done a great job and, and uh, very dependable, great leader, great leader. And, uh, and he's, he can snap the football. Oh, he's good, okay. yeah. In terms of... Hunter's obviously making transition to Juice maybe in terms of going from guard to center. How much does that those guard experiences help a guy when they're doing all the things you're talking about, trying to block someone's down?